thank you for the invitation. Um, it's my honor to share this research with you um, here in Yangon Dashi. So uh, my title today is the systematic study of EGF on a single network in cancer cell using uh, a new technology called microwave array. Um, so um, I think most people here uh, are very familiar with the system biology. Um, basically, compared to the molecular biology, system biology can uh, acquire more data and that's why it's able to study more me uh, mechanistic and uh, you can study like a whole protein or whole genome, uh, such like that. And several technology has been developed and widely used uh, for the research of resistance biology, um, including the mass, the uh, in the general world, uh, which is the camera, the ELISA, the microarray, um, cross cytometry, and live cell imaging. Um, you know, the throughput and the multiplexing, uh, the signal particles that get the signal size are all different in, in this technology. So, there is no, uh, there is, there is no answer to, to say uh, which is the best technology to use. It depends on what kind of research you want to do. So, uh, uh, depending on your research field, you may choose one or two uh, that's the most suitable technology to study. And so, the thing is, um, I think most people, people know that the MRA does not totally correlate to the protein in most cells and most systems. So um, the correlation is actually very bad, from 0 to around maybe 0 0.6. That's why in several cases we need to study the pro uh, protein instead of the, the uh, MRI. That's why people start to uh, develop the antibody array. So they think that um, it's easier just to do a high throughput way. Uh, by printing the uh, sorry the antibody onto a slime and then incubate with the, your lysate and uh, as the high school way you can see several um, protein change at one time. Okay. Uh, so the, the problem of the antibody already is that um, not every analogy is suitable to be printed on a slide. And the thing is, the second thing is, uh, the protein has to be, uh, to be tagged with the dye. And the tag of the dye might appear you find it uh, with the antibody. Therefore, it is be the antibody that can be used in a, in a array. And so, that's how people develop the, um, the sandwich way to detect. So, the sandwich way is you print the antibody onto a onto a array, then sorry, a slide, and then you put your like tissue line set or cell line set uh, without any tag on it, and then you use a secondary antibody that can detect the same protein with the tag on it. The problem is uh, the the technique here is very cool. It's, it's very specific. You can eliminate any non-specific binding of the or you the only one antibody. However, um, it's not easy to find a pair of antibody that can recognize uh, the same protein with no interference. Therefore, um, some people start to develop a reverse phase array. That means to print the cell lysate or tissue lysate instead of antibody onto the slide. Uh, this is also called a tissue array. Okay. Or some, some people call it a dump run. So, by Printing the tissue or the cell lysate onto the slide, you you incubate them with a tag antibody, and then you can detect the change of protein. So um, here is a sample of the use of a reverse phase array, published in Nature Method by my best lab in Harvard University. Um, they use this to study the um, effect of the small molecules uh, inhibitors. The problem of that is, they, for most people who use the tissue array, um, they only compare 
uh, decide if the NMRD has like single band or multiple band. And if they see a single band, they just go ahead and they use the the NMRD in the picture, right? However, my best lab compared 61 NMRD with the uh, the traditional wave turn and then with the reverse base array. What I found is that only four pro sorry four NMRD. The signal of the array is identical to the signal of the traditional wave turn. And then uh, another eight NMRD. The signal is similar in the array and the traditional wave turn, but it's not identical. So the array signal is actually shrink, is compressed. So it's, the, it's not as dramatically as the traditional wave turn. So besides that 12, all the others uh, 49 NMRD test is not consistent between the traditional wave turn and the uh, reverse phase array. So as showing here, like for the anti uh, for so uh, 308 AKT, you can see that after the EGF simulation, the signal increased a lot in the traditional wave turn. However, in the reverse phase array, there's no change. So in this situation, you will get mislead by your results for the reverse phase array. However, the tissue array or the reverse phase phase array is widely used in the clinical sample screening. So we don't actually know how many results is actually positive or is actually correct. Because only 4 out of 61 is identical between the two technologies. And like another egg is just similar signal but identical signal. So there is a, a need to improve the technology. The problem of the the technology of the reverse phase array is that the protein is not separate. So it's print as a spark. So you know the advantage of the Western brine is you separate your protein so you can see the different molecular way of protein. So even if your NMR recognize more than one band, you can actually look at the correct size of the band and say, okay, I can see my band here. So, you know, even if it says that five bands, you can still tell which one is the correct one. However, for the dark rod, or the uh, reverse phase array, it's only a dark. It light up or not. So if you see it light up, you might, what you see might be a cross reaction from other bands. It's, it might not be your radio signal, but you have no way to tell. So the only way to improve that is try to separate your protein on the right. Okay. So that's the idea of my post mentor, Dr. Richard Johnson, University of Chicago. He's trying to think some way to improve this.